This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the cost of financing our receivables. Because what we need to go through and do there, first of all, is look at the interest cost that we incur because we go through there and offer credit. Because what happens there is if we offer credit to our customers, that means that we are without cash for an additional period of time. So say 30 days, 60 days or 90 days. And what happens there is because we're without cash for that extra period of time, as opposed to taking the cash immediately from the cash sale, we need to borrow the funds short term, don't we? So whether that there is from a short term loan or whether that there is via some form of overdraft and that loan or that overdraft will go through there and incur interest. So we will need to work out the interest cost that we incur because we go through there and offer credit to our customers. So as well as offering credit to our customers, adding extra amounts of risk with regards to the lack of recoverability, it also adds cost to the business with, with regards to interest. Then we need to go through there and start to look at settlement discounts or prompt payment discounts to give them their other name and ask ourselves the question, by offering that prompt payment discount, yes, it gets the cash in quicker, but we get less cash in, don't we? And because we go through there and get less cash in, that effectively means that we need to borrow for that period of time to ensure that we get the full amount of cash from the overall invoice that we issued. And again, that is going to have a cost. So therefore, we need to work out the cost of offering that settlement discount and see whether or not that is cheaper than actually going through there and financing the debt via an overdraft or short term loan. So let's go through there and pick things up first of all with regards to the interest cost. Uh, nice simple calculation to work out the interest cost. We just go through there and take the interest rate and multiply it by the outstanding receivables balance because that receivables balance should be pretty constant across the whole year so remain fairly static unless it was a, a seasonal business uh, but we're not worried about seasonality here it's a consideration that you would have in the real world but here to work out the interest cost you just take the receivables balance and multiply it by the interest rate that interest rate is the interest rate on either your short-term borrowings uh, as a loan or with regards to an overdraft so if we go through there and have a look at the example which is referred to there as your interest cost uh, it wants two things. Uh, first of all, it wants us to work out our receivable days. And then secondly, it wants us to work out the interest cost associated with financing the receivables. So first of all, to work out your receivable days, hopefully you can go through there and remember how to work out your receivable days. Remember, your receivable days goes through there, doesn't it? And takes your SFP figure divided by your statement of profit or loss and multiply by 365 days isn't it and here if we're being specific the SFP is your receivables balance uh, the statement of profit or loss technically should be your credit sale shouldn't it but a lot of the time we just use total sales unless we're given the information to work out credit sales so here nice and straightforward uh, receivables balances of 10 million total sales are 42 there's no adjustment to work out the credit sales and multiply that, is it, by 365 days. Tap that onto your calculator, and I think that works out, is it, at 87 days. Again, I'm just rounding it to the nearest day. I think it comes to 86.9 or thereabouts. Okay. Uh, so it takes us 87 days to be able to go through there and collect that $10 million receivable balance, okay, uh, on average. Uh, what we've then got there is to work out the interest cost. Should be nice and straightforward. Uh, the interest cost, well, we finance it with an overdraft of 10%. The receivables are there at 10 million. So the interest cost is there as $1 million, okay. And what we then begin to look at are the settlement discounts because what we've got there is it takes 87 days to get the cash in. Uh, and what we've got there is that works out at an interest of $1 million. Okay. Now, if we can reduce the level of receivables, which we could, 
uh, by offering the prompt payment discounts, whether that's 1%, 2%, 3%, we will go through there and reduce the receivables balance. And by reducing the receivables balance, we therefore go through, don't we, and reduce the interest cost. So we need to go through there, don't we, and look at what the effective interest is if we go through there and offer the discounts. Okay. So what we've got there with regards to your settlement discounts, uh, they are given there to encourage early payment. I think we've gone through and mentioned that already. Uh, the advantages, which again, I think we've spoken about there, is that it decreases the receivables and therefore will also decrease the interest charge. And also as well, what it should go through and do is because it encourages earlier payment, it reduces the level of irrecoverable debts. Okay. Uh, the disadvantages, uh, it could be difficult in terms of setting the terms. What percentage do you offer? How many days? Are you going to go through that and reduce the credit period by if you offer the discounts? Uh, there is a bit of more uncertainty because you're not sure if the customer will or won't take advantage of the prompt payment discount. So if you've offered a discount to collect the debts in 10 days earlier, say, then fine. If they pay 10 days earlier, great. But if they don't pay within 10 days, is that because they're in financial difficulty or is that just because they're just going to not take advantage of that payment discount that you've offered? And again, just be aware there, there's also an extra administrative burden, isn't there, in terms of recording the prompt payment discounts and ensuring that those prompt payment discounts are actually paid within the terms that we actually offer. OK, uh, there's nothing necessarily to guarantee either that that prompt payment discount will reduce the bad debts that they could still go through there and in practice be incurred. Uh, and again, uh, customers may pay over normal terms, but still take the cash discount. OK, uh, so effectively taking the discount, but not paying on time. OK, uh, and again, that just in introduces administrative issues, doesn't it? OK, so what we've got, let's go through there and have a look at the example. Uh, example number four, isn't it? OK. Uh, and it goes through there and says, using the compound interest method, calculate the effective annualized cost of offering the discount. So it wants an annualized cost, essentially a percentage. OK, so by offering the prompt payment discount, how much does that cost us with regards to the additional borrowing that is required, isn't it? Uh, because we are, if you like, getting less cash in over a period of time, aren't we? OK, so what we've got, uh, it says that EFG has year end receivables of 10 million based on sales for the year of 42 million. And it's funded by a rate of 10 percent. So that's from the previous interest cost example, isn't it? So currently we are there, aren't we offering? Is it 80? I think was it 87 days, wasn't it? If memory serves me right, was our receivables. And it says that EFG offers a discount of 2% for payment within 10 days. Okay. So what we've got there is that currently, so without any prompt payment discounts, we have there, is it 80 seven days and then with the prompt payment discount it's going to be reduced is it the to is it 10 days so quite a a significant reduction isn't it in terms of the days so if we just assume that we take a nice simple 100 dollar invoice if we get the cash in is it the for 10 days then that two percent discount will mean that we get 98 in in 10 days of issuing the invoice so what you've got there is to work out the cost well we are without cash of two but we receive cash of 98, okay? So we need to borrow an additional two uh, to be able to go through there and finance the full 100 of the debt, isn't it? Uh, if you multiply that, is that by 100%, then that there is 
0.041%. And is that there, I think, for a period of 77 days. Now, what we need to go through and do there is that for a 77-day period, we need to go through there then, don't we, and annualise that cost. So we do 1 plus, is it the current rate of 0 0.02041. And to annualise it, it's 365 over, is it the 77? We deduct the 1, don't we? Uh, and I think that gives me, is it 0 0.1005? which is the equivalent, is it, of, shall we say, 10.1%. Okay, so the annualised cost of offering the discount is 10.1%. Against, is it the 10%, which is the rate, is it, on the overdraft, so therefore, funding it via an overdraft is cheaper. So therefore, do not offer that prompt payment discount. It costs more to go through there and offer the prompt payment discount on an annualised basis. Is that the, as is it, 10.1% as what it would if we were to finance the borrowings or finance the receivables using your overdraft, isn't it? Okay, excellent. There we have it. Uh, the other alternative that you have, and I think it's mentioned in one of the, the provider's texts, is let me just try and recall it, that there is a, a formula that you can use which makes it much quicker. Uh, and that formula goes through that and takes, is it 100 over 100 less, is it D? to the power of 365 over t, subtract 1, okay, uh, whereby d is the discount, so in our example it was 2%, wasn't it, so 2%, uh, and then what you've got t is the reduction in days. So here we had, was it 100 over 100 less 2 to the power of 365 over the 77 subtract the 1. Okay, if I reach down for my calculator, 100 divided by, does that work out as 98, to the power of 365 divided by 77, subtract 1, magic, that gives me 0 0.1005, which is the equivalent, isn't it, of 10.1%, okay, uh, just be aware, I don't think that formula is given to you within the actual exam, so it's one that you would need to go through there, isn't it? And commit to memory, okay? So ensure that, that you can memorise that formula to be able to work out the annualised cost of offering that prompt payment discount, okay? Uh, there's another example. I'll allow you to go through and work that in your own time at home. If you get stuck, if you've got any problems, then by all means, give me a shout on the forum. Other than that, I'll see you next time when we start to look there at invoice discounting and factoring.